Using JPEG or RAW files for your photography is a setting that you'll come across pretty quickly. But what does it mean? And does using one over the other make your photos look better? In this video, we'll find out. A RAW file is when an image is captured by your camera, it is stored as RAW uncompressed data. If your camera photo format is set to RAW, no processing is applied, meaning the file stores more colour and tonal data. With more data stored in the file, that means there is more flexibility for editing compared to compressed formats such as JPEG. And talking of JPEG, when your camera is set to this for photography, the raw data is processed and compressed to fit into a JPEG file. This means that certain processing is already done and baked into the photo file. This includes settings such as white balance, colour saturation, tone curve, sharpening and colour space. But does using one over the other really matter? Well, there are massive pros and cons to both file formats. And in reality, there are different use cases for why you would use both, and we'll go through those now. If you'd like to see more videos about camera tips and tricks, such as which is the best video recording format, then please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. So, the advantages of RAW file format. First of all, you get a lot more colours. A JPEG is an 8-bit file format, and this essentially means, without going into all the numbers and millions and billions of colours that are available, it just means that you get a lot more colour, so more colour depth, from a RAW image. This gives you a lot more possibilities when it comes to editing to give you kind of more flexibility of what type of final product that you can get from your photos when editing. And it's pretty similar when it comes to dynamic range. You get a much wider dynamic range and colour gamut when it comes to using RAW. So this could be represented by a massively over or underexposed image where if it's far too, colours are far too blown out with a JPEG, you're not necessarily going to be able to put that file in an editing software and recover any of that overexposed data. With a RAW file, however, as the exposure isn't baked into the image, that data should still be recoverable if it was there in the first place. So if your scene wasn't as overexposed as the camera is making you believe, then you should be able to recover that data from the image. So it does give you a lot more flexibility Think of a RAW as just a negative file. It's as close as you can get to just storing all the data possible. And this does mean that you can have finer control and adjustment when it comes to editing your photos. As I say, as you are storing as much data as possible with a RAW file, it just gives you absolute flexibility to change your shots or edit your shots, should I say, as much as possible and have the biggest range of options available to you while editing. None of the camera settings like white balance, brightness or contrast are baked into the image so that you can start from scratch in the edit as you can't always know exactly which of those settings are quite right when you've only got your little viewfinder or preview window or you just want to spend a little bit more time to tweak your image perfectly in the edit. And because raw images are lossless in compression, you're not going to get compression artifacts that you may get with JPEG which will make things not look quite as professional, especially if you were blowing up your photos to a larger size. And the same goes for sharpening. No sharpening will be applied to a raw image, which means that if you need to sharpen up your images in post-production, you can do very easily. Whereas with a JPEG, some sharpening is probably already going to have been applied and you can't undo that if it's too sharp and is adding too much grain whereas with a RAW file, there won't be any on there, so you can just add the sharpening as you like. But, but of course, there are many downsides of RAW files, and first of all is that they must be post-processed, which means that natively, almost no cameras or computers read the file, a RAW file, which is also separate per camera manufacturer, so a Sony RAW file isn't the same as a Canon RAW file, for example, so you need to be able to find software that can actually open raw files so that you can then edit them and save them out in something that is readable. So you can't load a raw straight onto your phone to post on Instagram, for example, or you, most of the time you can't even just open them in Windows Picture Viewer. Very frustrating as a lot of the raw proper editing softwares are not free, such as Lightroom. There are free ones available, but I don't think they are quite as reliable as things like Lightroom. So that is definitely something worth bearing in mind if your workflow needs to be fast and you just need to be able to get your photos off your camera straight away and post online instantly. 
And as you can probably guess, as a raw file is as uncompressed as possible, it means that the files will be huge. On your computer, you can see that the file size of a raw image compared to a JPEG, which are the same image, is considerably larger. So you do need to bear this in mind, not only when it comes to storing the files on your computer, but also the memory card while you're taking photos, you will be able to take significantly less photos if you are taking them in RAW compared to JPEG. So if storage is a concern for you, budgetary wise, or you only have a certain amount of either computer or memory card storage available to you, then it will take a lot less photos if you are taking photos in RAW. And the double downside of the file size of RAW is that it can also slow your camera's processing down considerably. If you're taking burst shots, for example, all in RAW, it can be a good few seconds afterwards before you'll be able to continue to take photos as your camera will still be processing the images. This can be sped up with faster memory cards, but still it's always likely to going to be an issue, especially in comparison to JPEG. And your computer will also transfer the files slower and be able to process the files slower in your editing software just because the file sizes are so much bigger. So that's the main pros and cons of RAW files, but now let's talk about the pros and cons of JPEGs. An advantage is that some key processing is already done to the file. As mentioned before, settings like white balance, color saturation, tone curve, sharpening, and color space are already applied to the image. It should mean that your photo is pretty close to being in a usable state straight away. This is great if you just want to be able to edit your photos very quickly and post them quickly online on a photo sharing website, for example, without thinking, right, now I have to edit all those settings and whatever color adjustments I want to do to a photo before I can even think about posting. All of this is quite time consuming. So with a JPEG, it just means that your turnaround on your workflow can be sped up considerably. And because JPEGs are compressed, you get some much smaller file sizes. So if you're working with less memory on your computer or memory card, and you just want to transfer your photos quickly, then JPEGs are going to be a lot quicker than RAW files. And in the opposite to RAW, again, is the compatibility. I've never known any modern device that can't open a JPEG file. So you put your memory card in a different device or you just transfer the photos across, they will open on any, pretty much any phone or computer that, I, as I said, that I've ever used. So you're not gonna find any issues just being able to share JPEG images with anyone. And also you'll get considerably less camera slowdown while doing burst shooting, for example, or any type of shots with JPEGs. Your camera should almost always be able to process these quickly enough to use straight away. And because the file sizes are small again, backing up your images, just transferring them all over to your computer or your phone will be tons quicker than using raw files just because the file sizes are so much smaller. So the disadvantage of JPEGs are that lossy compression format. It basically means that because the file sizes is being compressed and stored smaller than the original or what it will be opened up as, there are likely to be compression artifacts. Now, if using your photos primarily on a smaller screen, it's not too much of an issue, but it is definitely worth bearing in mind. It can cause loss of detail and kind of posterization effect where the colors you can kind of see in different waves moving through the photos in more extreme examples, which will look less professional compared to a raw file. And there are also that loss of saturation over or under saturation data that if the photo is massively one or the other, you're not likely to be able to recover that image in any usable way in post-processing. It will just add way too much artificial color and noise, and it will just nowhere, nowhere near look as good as recovering a raw file from that situation. You get considerably less colors with JPEG compared to RAW. As I was mentioning before, I won't get into the minutia of the millions and billions of colors available, but as JPEGs are 8-bit, yes, there are considerably less colors. This isn't that noticeable usually to the naked eye, but if you really do want absolute precision of color, then RAW is going to be much closer to recreating that. And of course, the camera settings are irreversible on a JPEG image. And so all those settings that I've mentioned a few times now around color and contrast, sharpening, they are irreversible from the image. So if you've applied something that isn't quite right, yes, you can try and fix it in post-production, but it's not the same as RAW where you can simply just not have those settings applied at all. So that is the pros and cons of both file types, but which should you use? If you know you only want to use your photos for quick online publishing, for photo sharing websites such as 
Instagram, then JPEG most of the time is going to be absolutely fine for you. The smaller file sizes means that transferring them is going to be quicker. If you're displaying them primarily on smaller screens and at smaller resolutions, then the detail advantages of RAW aren't really going to be applicable. So a JPEG will be best in those type of situations. It'll save you a lot of space and a lot of money on buying more memory cards and potentially more computer storage, and your photos will be in a usable state much quicker because of the baked in settings. But if you want to really heavily process your image, you want to pay real close attention to details and all the different settings that you would need for photography, perhaps if you are going to blow up your photos for using as a print on a wall and it is really going to be a big size and you want everything to look absolutely perfect, then you definitely want to be using raw images over JPEGs as you're just going to get so much more detail, so much more color depth, so much more options really when it comes to processing your image manually, editing in software such as Lightroom. So after all this, which is better? And my automatic answer is, why not both? A lot of cameras these days will have an option for JPEG and RAW. Of course, this gives you the issue of double processing all your images where it's saving each image twice. So it will slow your camera down considerably while taking images. And it also use up a lot more storage space, but I find generally memory cards aren't that expensive these days and computer storage. I don't personally find storage too much of an issue. So if you're just starting out and you're still not entirely sure which you prefer, I would say put your camera on this setting, then after a bit of time, see which file format you've been using the most. Have you been utilizing all the extra advantages that you get from a raw file? Or have you just been using JPEGs quickly and easily because it suits your workflow better? Then you can make a decision based on that rather than persevering down one path which ends up not being right and you end up not using some of your photos. Which file format do you use, RAW or JPEG? Let me know in the comments below. But if you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. But until next time, see ya.